Yo, what is up guys? It is Small back again with another Powder of Knowledge Shop Rotation Guide. Basically, the rotation just changed and I'm going to be letting you guys know which artifacts are actually worth buying and what else you should be buying from this shop. Now, if you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel to get updates whenever a video like this releases that can help you guys out and also to get live notifications when I start my live stream because we've been playing on my 3-star only free-to-play account and, you know, just kind of talking about Epic 7, other games, and just life in general. It's a really fun time and I hope to see you guys there. That being said, let's get into the video. So, Powder of Knowledge Shop, it is access through the shop, of course, and I get a lot of questions asking how you actually get Powder of Knowledge, so I'm going to talk about this really quickly. So, the way you get Powder of Knowledge is basically you click a range here in your inventory after you click the artifacts tab, right? And you just select the ones you don't want. Three stars will give you one powder each. Four stars will give you eight. And I believe uh, five stars will give you 24. Now, I recommend keeping, you know, one copy of four stars and five stars if you can. Actually, one copy of four stars limit broken if you can, maxed. Um, and then after that, you can start selling your dupes. Uh, there are other um, artifacts you want to keep multiple copies of. For example, like Aureus, like Daydream Joker, right? But um, for the most part, you can sell your dupes if you really need the powder because... Believe me, you're going to need your powder for the future weeks with banners. So, you're going to see that these two at the top are 240. These are the featured uh, artifacts on the banners. By the time you guys see this video, you guys might be in a different rotation. If that's the case, uh, make sure you guys check out the Should You Pull video because I talk about the artifacts there as well. But for this rotation, Indestructible Gators, if you guys didn't know, uh, pretty much a must-have, I think, if you're going to play with Huayang in PvP because Draco Plate doesn't work with her because she doesn't crit. And Sigurd Scythe is good, but she already has a lot of sustain with her S2, and her own artifact on herself will make it so she has a lot of burn pressure, because she has a lot of attack, and burns will scale with attack, making it so that she does a lot of damage. There might even be some shenanigans where you can go, you know, Huayang with, like, Carrot on your team, and, you know, do a lot of damage in PvP, and I might test that out, actually. Next, we have Black Hand of the Goddess. So this artifact's pretty good. Um, the only thing is, it's not really good until you max limit break it because you're, it's basically just like a stat check on this artifact. You're just getting stats. Um, so you want to kind of max this out. Um, I wouldn't personally buy this for 240 powder. If you manage to pull a lot of random copies and you have a max limit broken cop um, copy of this artifact randomly, then yeah, you can use it. But there's a lot of other mage artifacts out there that are very good, like Taga Hells and um, Abyssal Crown, which are actually both on this list. So I don't think this one is worth it. Bottle of Knowledge, you guys should probably already know, you guys always want to buy this. It is a way to limit break any single artifact in the game that's a 5 star, except for the Guild Shop artifacts, so it won't work on Proof of Valor and Symbol of Unity, but it will work on limited artifacts. So it's very nice for collab and limited artifacts that are very, very hard to get. Charms, I would never buy because charms are hard to get, but yeah, um, you want to save your powder. Next, we have Abyssal Crown. So, Abyssal Crown is actually very good. Now, the thing is, like, I would... Say you want one copy because it's very good on Politis, right? Just to have that chance to stun. Um, it goes up to 18%, I believe, if you just plus 15 it. Um, but the thing is, you want to save your powder. Although Abyssal Crown is very, very good, I'm just keeping in mind that there are um, collab banners coming out in the future. And also there's the triple banner, so keep that in mind. I'll tell you guys if these artifacts are worth it or not, but keep in mind that there are future banners where you might want to save your powder for. But Abyssal Crown, very good artifact. You might want to consider buying at least one copy if you have a lot of powder to spare. Next, we have Air to Surface Missile, Misha. Um, this one is not that bad, honestly, because of the hit chance and crit damage. I actually see this run on, like, Operator Sigurd sometimes to try to snipe out um, dodge units, especially when they have, like, a FCC on their team. You can try to one-shot them with an S2. And they still have that chance to miss, but very good artifact in my opinion, but definitely not worth the powder. It's very niche. Next, we have Snow Crystal. Yeah, this this kind of sucks. It's Shoes Artifact, um, Warrior with f -res, right? Um, it can be used on Mediator Cowric, I guess, um, but you can run Strat Gauntlet as well, and that might be better, honestly, but Snow Crystal only ever really used on, like, yeah, like, basically at Meteor Cowric or Designer a little bit, and they can use as well, but very, very niche artifact, and both of them are ML5, so, yeah, kind of hard to justify buying that one. Next, we have Elbrus. This one is really OP. Uh, when you max it out, it's 20%, and it definitely feels like 50% on some units. Um, and this will work for the stacks. So if you AoE a team here, if you have the 10%, right? So you have this at plus zero, it's 10%. Um, you're going to have a 30% chance to counter, right? Altogether, very good on Bellion. Uh, very good on other knights that use counter. While well, you can use it on FCC even. I've seen like 100% effectiveness. Helbris, FCC is just provoke lock people. It's good on Charles. That was like the, you know, main holder of this artifact a long time ago. But right now, the main holder is going to be Bellion. So if you have Bellion, I would make sure you buy one copy to use it in PvP. 
Otherwise, you don't really need to buy this right now. Um, you can always pull it in the future and yeah, mostly PvP artifact anyways. Now we're getting to the 4-star artifacts. So 4-star artifacts are actually very cheap, 60 powder. And it's a great way to actually buy a lot of copies of a very strong 4-star artifact. So Tog Hells. So Tog Hells, very strong artifact, as you guys know. Gets countered by Bellion because she stops the soul generation. But if you just pre-ban Bellion in RTA, which every cleaver does, you can just, you know, use your Tog Hells normally. So people that cleave or like cleaving a lot, or even like non-cleavers, are going to want to have multiple copies of this. I think if you're a non-cleaver, maybe like three max copies is very good. If you're a cleaver, you're gonna want like, I don't know, six or seven, right? Because this artifact is super strong. It is usable on every single mage. And it gives you 20 souls at the start of the battle. So you're basically able to soul burn any ability in the game at the start of the battle. And we all know how OP soul burns are, right? For example, Basar Cleave. If you have a max Tongue Hells, you can soul burn as S3 at the start and there's no way to get 15 percent in. Another example would be Carrot. If you can S3 with Soul Burn, you can detonate right after. Very, very powerful artifact. So I would definitely make sure, if you have a lot of um, powder saved up, that you get a maximum break copy if you can. Most likely you won't, though, have enough powder to get um, the copy because there are really good banners coming out in the future, like the collab and limited, like in the triple banner, like I said. So if you have a lot of powder saved up, um, I know Taga Hells for sure for whales. People just buy like 15 copies of these when it, when it rotates in the shop. But honestly, if you're free to play, you might want to skip out on this. Um, and just kind of pray that you pull into it because it is a four star artifact and you will, will pull multiple copies. Sasha Thane's definitely not worth it. It is a good artifact for cleave as well because you can put it on a ranger that is used in your cleave, right? And you can also, you know, CR push your allies when you kill enemies. Um, also good in PvE on like Asaria and any ranger that is a support unit that you use in like Azimac 13 and stuff that has a lot of adds. Otherwise, not that good. Silver Rain, this is going to be used on basically um, Ran. Um, that's pretty much it. There's other thieves that can use this actually. I think uh, ML Celine can also use this as well, but you want to use it on Dust Devil most of the time. Um, definitely not worth the 60 powder, in my opinion, because you're going to pull a lot of copies of this, and this is a very niche artifact. So you're going to have definitely more copies than you're able to use it by just pulling on random banners, right? Malaraz Tome, very powerful Soul Weaver artifact. You can pretty much use this on every Soul Weaver in PvE, and it's good. PvP is very good as well. You can use it on fast. Um, Fast units like Amelia to, to cycle very quickly. Dien is very good with it as well. Um, just basically a very strong all-around artifact. There's only a few, like a certain few amount of uh, soul weavers you don't want to use this on, like Rowana. Basically anything that doesn't have um, more than two or more non-attack skills, in my opinion. So yeah, that pretty much covers the powder shop, guys. Um, I know this is kind of a long video talking about every single artifact, but I think it's very important because we are stuck with these artifacts for 41 days. And just keep in mind the rotating. Uh, Artifacts will always be 240 powder and will be, you know, mirror whatever is running on the current banner because there's no pity system for artifacts. So make sure you guys check my should you pull video if you guys are watching this in the future um, to actually see if those artifacts are worth buying for because I talk about that in every single should you pull video that I release. As always, guys, I hope you have a great day and thank you for supporting my channel. And as always, make sure you leave a like and comment. It really helps me out a lot. And also subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Peace.